One of the crippled reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant has been fitted with a cover that will help lower radioactive emissions. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, had been building the casing for the number one reactor since June. The cover is 54 meters high, 47 meters wide, and 42 meters deep. It has a ventilation system that filters out radioactive substances. TEPCO says that during tests, the system removed more than 90 percent of radioactive cesium. The company is considering installing similar covers for the number three and number four reactors when debris removal is completed after summer next year. Japan's health ministry is set to lower its radiation limits for food to one millisievert per year as early as April. The figure is one-fifth the current level. The ministry set provisional radioactivity safety limits on foodstuffs at five millisieverts per year after the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant in March. This would translate into 500 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram in meat, fish, vegetables, and cereals such as rice. The ministry decided to lower the limits to match international standards as radioactive substances detected in foodstuffs have been falling since the accident. On Thursday, Japan's Food Safety Commission recommended that cumulative inter internal radioactive exposure from food during a person's lifetime be limited to more, no more than 100 millisieverts. The new safety limits set by the health ministry would result in stricter standards for each food item and are likely to fall within the levels recommended by the commission. The ministry's panel is, is to start deliberating the issue next week to set standards for food items. Japan's Atomic Energy Commission says it aims to start retrieving melted nuclear fuel rods from the Fukushima Daiichi plant within 10 years. The Commission's expert panel presented a draft report on Friday outlining the timetable for scrapping the plant. The report says decommissioning will start with repairing the containment vessels of the number one, two and three reactors where meltdowns occur. The Commission also plans to start moving spent fuel rods from pools at the number one, two, three and four reactors to another pool in the plant within three years. The report projects that the decommissioning will take more than 30 years to complete. In the 1979 Three Mile Island accident, about 70 percent of the reactor's fuel rods melted. Fuel retrieval began six years after the accident and lasted for five years. The work at Fukushima is expected to be longer and more difficult because the extent of the damage is more severe and workers will have to repair four reactors simultaneously. A new invention could make decontamination work easier. A group of Japanese researchers says it has developed a portable device that could remove radioactive substances with laser beams. Researchers from the Wakasa One Energy Research Center created the machine. The device uses high-speed laser beams to scrape off radioactive substances from the surface of pipes and other objects at nuclear power plants. The researchers say that since only the surface is clean, the machine generates 1,000 times less radioactive waste than conventional methods. The device is about 30 centimeters high and wide and 40 centimeters long. The team says it's the world's first portable decontaminator. The machine can remove radioactive material very easily. We hope it will be useful not only at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, but also the fields, rice paddies and houses around the facility.
Tokyo Electric Power Company is set to request public funds in order to pay financial compensation to victims of the Fukushima nuclear crisis. Sources say TEPCO is expected to incur about $7.6 billion in net losses for the business year through next March. The major reasons they cite include sharp rises in fuel costs for thermal power generation. The firm plans to ask for about $11.8 billion in assistance from a government-backed institution to help pay compensation to people and businesses affected by the nuclear accident. TEPCO also plans to lower pension benefits for retirees as part of restructuring efforts. The government will receive TEPCO's plan on Friday. It will then scrutinize whether the amount of financial assistance is appropriate and determine if the proposed compensation system will work. Japanese mental health experts will set up a psychological care center to help children who survived the March disaster. Many children are showing signs of psychological instability. They cry at night or don't, have, don't want to play outside. The center will work with health organizations nationwide to send experts to affected areas on a long-term basis. The government plans to ask residents and companies in Japan's southern region of Kyushu to voluntarily cut electricity use by about 5% during the coming winter. Many nuclear plants remain idle in Japan following the Fukushima nuclear accident. All plants operated by Kyushu Electric Power Company will be stopped by year-end for regular checks. People in Fukushima are quite understandably hungry for information and on how to protect themselves from radiation. One place they can look for lessons is Belarus. More than 20% of that nation was contaminated by the Chernobyl nuclear power plant explosion in Ukraine 25 years ago. An expert from Belarus shared his knowledge with residents of the prefecture where Japan's nuclear meltdown occurred. The government has set provisional safety limits for food and drink. How do they compare to the standards adopted by the Belarus government after the Chernobyl nuclear accident? Japan's provisional food limits are just the first step. There's a need to conduct analysis and revise the numbers over the long term. The standards should be set at levels that are effective for Japanese people.